Hey, so this is my first time with Mathematica 13.2. So here, this is uh, just to verify that it's 13.2. It says 13.2 up here. We'll get all the it says version 13.2.0 for Microsoft Windows 64-bit November 18th, 2022. Release ID 13.2.0.0.0858442021111816960. Patch level zero uh, has my activation key and machine ID. So um, I can benchmark it, for example. And it says data fitting. Um, didn't do very great on the benchmark. Don't save. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna be working through the examples in Stephen Wolfram's blog. Uh, so, <coughs> um, so the key, uh, introducing astrocomputation. Astronomy has been a driving force for computation for more than 2,000 years, from the antithe a correct device on it. in version 13.2 it's coming to Wolfram language in a big way. Yes, the Wolfram language and Wolfram Alpha has, have had astronomical data for well over a decade, but what's new now is astronomical computation fully integrated into the system. In many ways our astro computation capabilities are modeled on our geo computation ones. But astro is substantially more complicated. Mountains don't move at least perceptibly, but planets certainly do. Relativity also isn't important in geography, but it is in astronomy. And on the Earth, latitude and longitude are good standard ways to describe where things are. But in astronomy, especially with everything moving, describing where things are is much more complicated. Oh, and there's the question of where things are versus where things appear to be because of effects ranging from light propagation to delays to refraction in the Earth's atmosphere. The key function for representing where astronomical things are is astroposition. Here's where Mars is now. Astroposition Mars, so I can evaluate this with... I want to interpret the object. So what does that output mean? It's very here and now oriented. By, okay, let me just save this real quick. Save it in my documents as 13.2 first work. So we have azimuth 9 degrees, 0 minutes, 54.6 seconds. Altitude negative 26 degrees, 9 minutes, 55.2 seconds. Uh, by default, it's telling me the azimuth angle from north and altitude angle above the horizon for Mars from where here says I am at a time specified by now. How can I get a less personal representation of where Mars is? Because even if I just reevaluate my previous input now, I'll get a slightly different answer just because of the rotation of the Earth. So, put the same thing. How it's slightly different now, it's 9 degrees 14 minutes, 34.0 seconds. For the azimuth, the altitude is negative 26 degrees. 7 minutes 23.5 seconds. One thing to do is to use equatorial coordinates that are based on a frame centered at the center of the Earth but not rotating with the Earth. One direction is defined by the rotation axis of the Earth, the other whereby the Sun is at the time of the spring equinox. The result is the astronomer friendly right ascension declination position of Mars. So here we have the equatorial position. So we have right ascension of Mars is 4 hours, 46 minutes, 19.9 seconds. Declination 24 degrees, 55 minutes, 5.6 seconds. Maybe that's good enough for a terrestrial astronomer. But what if you want to specify the position of Mars in a way that doesn't refer to the Earth? Then you can now, then you can use the now standard ICRS frame, which is centered at the center of mass of the solar system. Astroposition Mars ICRS. So now we have right ascension, 5 hours, 15 minutes, 54.9 seconds, declination, 23 degrees, 59 minutes, 28.8 seconds. Often in astronomy, the question is basically, which direction should I point my telescope in? And that's something one wants to specify in spherical coordinates. But it, particularly if one's out and about in the solar system, say, thinking about a spacecraft, it's more useful to be able to give actual Cartesian coordinates for where one is. Astroposition, Mars, ICRS, Cartesian. 
the text you are pasting it. Um, so now we have x coordinate 0 0.269419 astronomical units, y coordinate 1.38334 AU, and here are the raw coordinates by default in astronomical units. So I can do percent data, you get 0 0.269419, 1.38334, 0 0.62722. Astro position is backed by lots of computation, and in particular by ephemeris data that covers all planets and their moons, together with other substantial bodies in the solar system. Astro position Ganymede planetary moon. Astro position azimuth 85 degrees, 34 minutes, 42.5 seconds. Altitude negative 7 degrees, 47 minutes, 5.6 seconds. By the way, particularly the first time you ask for the position of an obscure object, there may be some delay where the necessary ephemeris gets downloaded. The main ephemerides we use data give the main ephemerides we use give data for the period 2000 to 2050. And we also have access to other ephemerides that cover much longer periods. For so, for example, we can tell where Ganymede was when Galileo first observed it. Astro position: Ganymede planetary moon. Uh, Thursday, 7 January. 16, 10, 19, 13, 45, GMT minus 5, Pisa City. Downloading ephemeris for Jupiter and its moons, 1600 to 1650. Elapsed time, 7 seconds. Remaining time, 17 seconds. So we have azimuth 258 degrees, 33 minutes, 35.8 seconds, altitude 35 degree, uh, altitude 43 degrees, 33 minutes, 18.2 seconds. This this uh, prime, prime symbol is for minutes, and this prime prime symbol is for seconds. We also have position data for more than 100,000 stars, galaxies, pulsars, and other objects, with many more coming soon. Astro position Betelgeuse star. Astro position right now is 349 degrees, uh, 40, 56 minutes, 5.4 seconds. Altitude is negative 43 degrees, 41 seconds, 26.7. I mean, negative 43 degrees, 41 minutes, 26.7 seconds. Things get complicated very quickly. Here's the position of Venus seen from Mars using a frame centered at the center of Mars. Astro position, Venus centered at Mars. Astro position, negative hour angle, one hour, zero minutes, 36.2 seconds. Declination, two degrees, 17 minutes, 33.5 seconds. If we, if we pick a particular point on Mars, then we can get the result in al azimuth altitude coordinates relative to the Martian horizon. So we have Venus, planet, Olympus, Mons, solar system feature, Astro position, azimuth 58 degrees, 56 minutes, 7.5 seconds. Altitude, negative 52 degrees, 53 minutes, 8.9 seconds. Another complication is that if you're looking for, at something from the surface of the Earth, you're looking through the atmosphere, and the atmosphere fracks light, making the position of the object look different. By default, astro position takes account of this when you use coordinates based on the horizon. You can switch it off, and then the results will be different. And for example, for, when, for the sun at sunset, substantially different. Astro position sun star sunset today. Fetching time zone posi fetching time zone data for geo position. Astro position sun okay, here we have Astro position sun star sunset today, B fraction none. So we have 240 minutes, uh, 240 degrees, 25 minutes, 46.4 seconds versus 240 degrees, 25 minutes. For, uh, but the altitude is different. You have negative zero degrees, 12 minutes, 38.8 seconds um, versus negative zero degrees, 49 seconds, 8.8, uh, 49 minutes, 8.8 seconds. And then there's the speed of light and relativity to think about. 
Let's say you want to know where Neptune is now. What do we mean where Neptune actually is, or do we mean where we observe Neptune to be based on light from Neptune coming to us? For frames referring to observations from Earth, we're normally concerned with the case where we include the light time effect. Yes, it does make a difference. Astro position Neptune, Wednesday, 30 November 2022, 12 GMT minus 5. Light time true. Astro position Neptune planet. Light time false. So we see here we have negative 19 degrees, 23 minutes, 52.7 seconds versus negative 19 degrees, 23 minutes, 54.5 seconds. Okay, so astroposition, which is the analog of geoposition, gives us a way to represent where things are astronomically. The next important function to discuss is astrodistance, the, anal the analog of geodistance. This gives the current distance between, G between Venus and Mars. Two point one seven seven, 2.1799 AU. This is the current distance from where we are according to here and the position of the Viking 2 lander on Mars. Aster distance to Viking 2 lander deep space probe position. 0 0.565978 AU. This is the distance from here to the star Tau Ceti. 7518833 AU. And yes, things are quite precise. Here's the distance to the Apollo 11 landing site on the moon computed five times with a one second pause in between and shown to 10 digit precision. 5, 5, 6, 5, 5, 6, 6, 5, so we have last digit 516-556-659-734-799. Just curious what happens if I pause for a, like 0 0.001 seconds. It's still noticeable. What happens if I pause for 0 0.000 seconds? That'd be a microsecond. What happens if I pause for a nanosecond? I had three more zeros. One, two, three. Now they're really close. It's 9814982298299 98 9839. This plots the distance to Mars for every whoop. this plots the uh, this plots the distance to Mars for every day in the next ten years. Oh, I, I didn't check the box, so it didn't fully. So we have 2024, 2026. Another function is astro-angular separation, which gives the angular separation between two, two objects as seen from a given position. Here's the result from Jupiter and Saturn seen from Earth over a 20-year span. The beginnings of astrographics. So this is the end of the section on introducing astro computation. I'm going to end the recording for now.